Dr. Mark Lorenzato. You're presenting with the symptoms of a urinary tract infection, frequency of urination, and pain on urination, sometimes pain or discomfort in the region of the bladder. The symptoms of urinary tract infection, or UTI, are very similar or the same as urethritis. Ure the urethra is the tube from the bladder to the outside, and it can become inflamed from allergic phenomena, such as a bubble bath or a soap causing irritation. This video is accompanied with a PDF, no need to take notes. Also, there are several other videos about the use of antibiotics and probiotics that may be appropriate. The, the basics. E. coli bacteria is the most common cause of urinary tract infection. E. coli is the predominant inhabitant of the colon, um, and times when a woman has to sit, or a man, for prolonged periods allows a culture or a small amount of E. coli in the bladder to multiply, resulting in a urinary tract infection. This is therefore most common after long flights and long car trips that I'll see urinary tract infections presenting to the clinic. In the event that there's some blood in the urine, it doesn't mean it's a more severe case of urinary tract, only that the members of the family of E. coli are the type of bacteria that result in some bleeding. They respond to antibiotics as well as any other E. coli. More frequent episodes of sex or more rigorous sex can result in a greater chance of urinary tract infections, and urinary tract infections can sometimes mimic the symptoms of sexually transmitted diseases, so it may be appropriate to check your urine for chlamydia and gonorrhea particularly. One can reduce the risk of urinary tract infection by wiping away from the urethra towards the anus when emptying the bladder or having a bowel movement. The symptoms of pyelonephritis or kidney infection include pain to the flank, to the region above the kidney, and to the tenderness to the kidney if one pushes there generally, and low back pain. There will also be frequency of urination, pain in urination, and a discomfort in the region of the bladder most often. Fever is more common, as is nausea and occasionally vomiting. It is imperative to start antibiotics as early as possible, both in bladder infections, but particularly in pyelonephritis or kidney infections. The treatment of urinary tract infections, bladder, ureter, or kidney, is by antibiotics. The antibiotics is initially empirical, the ones we think are most likely to work, and then at about three days, we'll get the results of the culture and sensitivity from the urine sample that we've collected on your first visit. The CNS, or culture and sensitivity, shows which antibiotics effectively eradicate the bacteria causing the infection, and therefore we can be assured that the antibiotic you're taking is correct. If it isn't correct, that is the time it needs to be changed, and you'll have to change antibiotics. In the event that your infection is not clearing up in about three days and much, much better and seem to be going away, please call us and validate that we have gotten the right antibiotic and that the CNS results are appropriate. Occasionally, we do not have contact information. It is inappropriate, perhaps not transcribed right, and we can't get in touch with patients when we really need to. So call if there's any problems. There are over the count there is an over the counter medicine that is effective at managing the pain in urination and the urinary frequency, but it will not eradicate the bacteria. This is phenazoperidine, also called azo. It is taken at 100 to 200 milligrams two or three times a day, usually for one or two days until the antibiotic is working effectively to diminish the symptoms. In the event of any nausea, one can get over-the-counter dimenhydrinate or meclizine, both anti-emetics, anti-nausea medicines that are effective. The use of cranberry juice may prevent an infection if taken early, but once an infection is established, it is imperative to use antibiotics to eradicate it. Again, 
the cranberry juice can be effective early in, in a urinary tract infection and even as an adjunct through the urinary tract infection, but it is imperative to take antibiotics if you have a urinary tract infection, if it's an acute infection, um, that has a potential of moving to your kidneys. Yeast infections are common side effects of the antibiotic therapy. Therefore, I frequently write for an anti-yeast or a medicine that will kill yeast to be taken after the antibiotic in the event of a vaginal yeast infection. Alternatively, there are over-the-counter medications like myconazole that can be used. So, the plan. We'll get your analysis, write you a prescription for an antibiotic, you'll pick up the nasoparidine to treat the symptoms, you'll drink lots of water, in the event things don't clear up in three, two and a half or three days, you'll call back to validate that the CNS was saying that your antibiotic does kill the bacteria that's in your system. And we may have you follow up with another urinary tract, with another urinalysis. We may have you follow up with another urinalysis depending upon your age and any likelihood of other problems with your urinary tract. In the event that we're relying on a urine to show no red blood cells, it needs to be five days before or after the menstrual period. Thank you. If you have any questions, please engage me and the team.